There are several important uh, peptides that have specific functions. And just to name a few, the vasopressin and the oxytocin, these are hormones that are released by the pituitary gland. And they are made up of nine amino acids that are connected together. So this is why we call them nona peptides. Um, there is a disulfide bridge between amino acid 1 and amino acid 6 in both of them. See how the amino acid chain um, arranges itself so that it makes a room to form a bond between amino acid 1 and amino acid 6. And this always happens whenever you have two cysteine molecules in there. Um, the, um, the amino acid chain will bend in order for the two cysteine molecules in, to form the disulfide uh, bridge. Um, they differ, both of these uh, hormones, they do differ in the, uh, in the third and the eighth amino acid. The vasopressin uh, decreases the urine formation and the oxytocin causes urine contractions. Another polypeptide, another important uh, polypeptide is the adrenocorticotropic hormone, the ACT hormone. This is also released by the pituitary gland. It has 39 amino acids and uh, the amino acids have no cysteine in them. So um, there is no disulfide bridges. This one regulates the reproduction of the steroid in the, uh, in the cortex of the adrenal gland. Um, to run through uh, some uh, protein properties, these are, uh, we said that these are very large natural polymers. They do have a very high molecular weight of 6,000 to several million units. Um, these are too large to pass through the uh, cell membrane. We said that we start naming a uh, protein, a polymer chain, whenever it has more than 50 amino acids that are connected together. So 50 and more, uh, this means that it is called a polymer chain. These are, uh, these are made inside the cell and they are contained inside the cell. They don't go out of the cell because they cannot pass through the cell membrane. If they leak out of the cell, this means that there is a problem. There is a damaged cell or there is a disease in there. A typical human cell contains around 9,000 different proteins and the body contains around 100,000 different proteins. Proteins, they take the form of his wither ions. They uh, have a characteristic isoelectric point. This means that they are neutral in there. And then they can behave as an acid, as an acid or a base, so uh, depending on the pH of uh, the solution. So this is why they behave as buffers in the solution. They can react with acids, they can react with bases. This is what buffer means. Um, they can be in solution or form a stable colloidal dispersion. Uh, dispersion. The, uh, uh, the form depends on uh, the uh, repulsive forces between the molecule. Um, and uh, repulsion normally is the weakest at the isoelectric point when the net charge is zero and the, the, when the protein clumps together and precipitate uh, from the solution. There are different types of proteins with different functions. To list uh, um, some of the types of the proteins, we have catalytic proteins. Um, these, they function as enzymes. We have structural proteins, storage proteins. These, they store uh, small molecules. We have uh, protective proteins, uh, regulatory proteins, nerve impulse uh, proteins, uh, movement proteins. These are muscle proteins. And last, we have transport proteins. These, they bind and transport small molecules and ions through the body. For the shapes of the proteins, we have two different shapes of proteins. We have fibrous protein, meaning that the protein will look like a long rod shape or a string-like molecule. This uh, intertwine to form fibers. Example of fibrous proteins, these are collagens, elastins, and keratin. And then we have globular proteins. These proteins, they are spherical shaped 
proteins, they uh, form stable suspensions in water, um, and they are water soluble. Example, we have hemoglobin and the transfer. Proteins can either be simple or conjugated. Simple proteins, these contain only amino acids. No other groups other than amino acids connected together to form the protein chain. Um, conjugated proteins, on the other hand, they are made up of amino acid residues, and in addition, there is organic or inorganic components there. We call them prosthetic groups. Um, this table over here has examples of, uh, um, of prosthetic groups that are found in, uh, in proteins. So, uh, nucleoproteins does have DNA and RNA as a uh, prosthetic group. Um, lipoproteins, for example, they have lipids in there. Uh, glycoproteins, they have carbohydrates. Um, the uh, hemoproteins, so this is an example of a hemoprotein. And the hemoprotein um, has a hemigroup inside. And the hemigroup, this is not an amino acid. It's a regular organic group, which is present in uh, multiple places in the, uh, uh, in the, in the hemoprotein. The structure of the protein can be either primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary. Um, the primary protein structure is the simplest, and this determines the secondary and the tertiary structures. This is a simple linear sequence of the amino acids in the protein chain. Um, and this is why it uh, determines the secondary and the tertiary structures. Um, it, uh, it is important for the functioning of the protein, and any small variation in the primary structure can cause a profound difference in the functioning of the protein. Whenever you have two cysteine molecules that are, or two cysteine amino acids that are next to each other, they always make a disulfide bridge. So a simple primary protein structure is a, uh, a simple sequence or strand of amino acids that are connected to each other uh, in a protein chain. Not all proteins have known amino acid sequence, but some of them we know their sequence of amino acids. The second type of uh, secondary, uh, the second type of protein is uh, a structure is the secondary protein structure. This is formed whenever we have hydrogen bonding between the amide groups of amino acid residues in the chain. And the hydrogen bonding forms as such. It's uh, the interaction between the oxygen of uh, uh, one carbonyl and the hydrogen of the amino group. There are two types of uh, secondary structures, the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheets. Okay, um, let's start with the alpha helix in there. Uh, both of them, they occur as a result of the hydrogen bonding interactions. So um, the alpha helix, it occurs when a single protein chain twists. The twisting of the chain, see that the twist in there, it, it, the, the amino acid the, uh, chain or the uh, uh, protein chain will behave like a spring. Um, it's a coiled helical spring in there. Um, the hydrogen bonding, they do occur between carbonyl oxygen atoms and the amide hydrogen atoms every four residues. So every four residues in there, you will have hydrogen bonding between the carbonyl of one amino acid and the hydrogen that is connected to the amino group of the other amino acid. That hydrogen bonding uh, causes the, uh, the protein to uh, form a coiled helical spring. The alpha helix is found in keratin. Keratin is a uh, protein, is a hair protein. In myosin, uh, this is a uh, muscle protein. Uh, epidermin, this is a skin protein, and fibrin, this is a blood cell protein. The other type of the secondary structure uh, of proteins is the beta pleated sheets. The beta pleated sheets is also held in shape by hydrogen uh, bonds, 
and uh, the uh, the hydrogen bonds are formed by the interaction of the oxygen of the carbonyl um, of one amino acid and the hydrogen of the amino of the other um, amino uh, amino acid. The beta pleated sheets they look like a piece of paper which has been folded in an alternating pattern, um, like when you are making a uh, a fan. And uh, the, these pleats, they, uh, as you can see, they are formed by the hydrogen bonding in there uh, between the atoms on the backbone of the uh, polypeptide chain. An example of uh, beta pleated sheets, these are found in uh, silk uh, proteins. So, for example, if I give you this uh, protein and I ask you go ahead and label the different protein regions or the protein structures in there, um, you choose first the uh, linear sequence, and that is going to be the primary structure. So, primary structure. It has to be linear sequence of amino acids so it's it's actually this part over here it can be this part over here it has to be linear it should not be coiled um, that is going to be the um, the primary structure and then we have the alpha helix and the alpha helix in there uh, as you can see this is uh, within the a protein within the same protein and that same protein is forced to make a ribbon structure uh, due to the hydrogen bonding interactions within that same protein uh, chain. Um, so that is going to be the secondary alpha helix uh, structure. Now, this one is again a secondary, but it's a beta pleated sheet where you do have hydrogen bonding interactions, but the hydrogen bonding interactions are between two different strands of proteins. Another type of protein structure is the tertiary protein structure. This is a 3D, a 3D shape uh, of a protein. It results from uh, interaction between the R groups of the amino acid residues in the protein. And the R groups can undergo multiple interactions. Um, the disulfide bridges, if you have a cysteine, the salt bridges, if you have ionic bonds between acidic and basic residues, the hydrogen bonding or hydrophobic interactions, if you have nonpolar residues. This is an example of uh, the uh, tertiary structure of uh, protein. So if you have two cysteine molecules that are, uh, or two cysteine amino acids that are next to each other, then those are going to make, they're going to have a, um, an, a reaction and you're going to end up getting the disulfide bridge. On the other hand, let's say, for example, if you have an um, aspartame and a lysine that are next to each other, then um, you are going to end up having an acidic ion for the aspartame and the amino um, cation for the lysine. This is an acid base that are next to each other. So these are going to make a salt bridge. Um, if you have two phenylalanine that are next to each other, these are two nonpolar residues or nonpolar groups. And these groups, they are going to um, have a hydrophobic interaction. And then if you have here two serine um, uh, amino acids that are next to each other, those they can undergo simple hydrogen bonding between the two alcohol functional groups. One hydrogen from one alcohol will interact with the oxygen of the other, and you're going to make hydrogen bonding. Whenever you have any of those interactions um, in the uh, protein, this is a tertiary protein structure. Whenever you have a, uh, um, an aqueous medium, the interaction of hydrophilic and hydrophobic sided chains with water, it determines the shape. Uh, proteins in aqueous uh, uh, solution, they fold into almost a spherical shape. 
uh, with their hydrophobic groups, they are buried in the core. In the hydrophilic groups, they extend out into the, uh, the water, which makes the, the protein soluble. The last type of protein structure is the quaternary protein structure. This is a more complex structure. And this structure exists in proteins that, um, that are made up of two or more uh, identical or different polypeptide chains. We call those subunits. Um, the subunits are polypeptides that have primary, secondary, or tertiary uh, structure. Um, so um, let's have an uh, an example in here. So hemoglobin is a uh, uh, is a blood protein, and uh, hemoglobin uh, has a quaternary structure. The reason why it has a quaternary structure because it consists of uh, two uh, or more. Actually, it consists of one, two, three, and four. It consists of four polypeptide chains. These are subunits. And these subunits, they are made up of primary, secondary, and tertiary uh, protein structures. So um, it consists of four uh, polypeptide chains, four uh, either different or the same. It really doesn't matter. But it, it needs to be two or more. And here it has four. It has uh, two chains that are alpha and two chains that are beta. And uh, these, they are uh, held together by non-covalent bonds such as hydrogen bonding and van der Waal forces. These are also weak forces, but they are enough in order to hold these uh, polypeptide chains together. In addition to um, these four different polypeptides that are held together, in addition to that, we have the prosthetic group as well, which is the hemi group here. This is an example in the, uh, in the hemoglobin protein. Hydrolysis of the proteins is the uh, protein digestion, and it happens in presence of an acid or a base, where simply a protein uh, reacts with water in presence of an acidic or basic medium, and uh, it uh, uh, breaks down into smaller peptides. In presence of an additional acidic and basic medium, it breaks into amino acids. This is an important process in uh, protein digestion, and uh, it uses enzymes. Uh, protein denaturation is the process that destroys the uh, protein's structure, and it makes it unable to, uh, to function. It occurs when the uh, protein's secondary, tertiary, or quaternary structure is broken down. Um, and uh, that causes the uh, peptide bond to uh, um, break and the structure to collapse. Uh, the result is simply a loose random uh, protein structure that is usually insoluble in the solution, so it simply precipitates.